and this is Madam Andre, and we will be your host for today's episode. Before we begin, let us first discuss and introduce what Switch TV is all about. Switch TV is an online variety program which will cater gospel reflections, Josephian values, therapy music, Chinese poetry reading, Chinese art, prayers, reflections, guidance, health check and updates, and many more. This will be shown every first Friday of the month as part of the 4Fs via Schoology, YouTube, and Campus Ministry FP page. This online program will help our students appreciate more of the Josephian culture, values, and characters. Every month, there will be a specific theme anchored in Switch values. Service, wisdom, integrity, trust, compassion, and harmony. And the vision mission of St. Joseph's School. For today's episode, our theme is service. Let us use the hashtag SJS Switch TV as we share comments, suggestions, insights, reflections online. We are very honored today that we will be hosting the kickoff of Switch TV. Right, Madam? Yes, indeed, Madam. How are you today, Madam? I feel great and excited. How are you, about the Madam? I feel the same way. What do you look forward to in today's show? Well, I am very excited and looking forward to all the segments, the sharings, the music, the Chinese poetry, reflections, and many more. Yes, so to begin with, we will listen to the opening messages of our dear principal, Madam Redora C. Cortina, and our student affairs officer, Sir Omer Vasquez. Dear Josephians, it has been a month now since we formally started our classes this year. Everyone has been challenged by the new normal, but I can proudly say that you have adjusted so well. Today we celebrate our Wellness Day. You participated in the first Friday Mass this morning, and this afternoon I am happy to endorse the new programs designed by our formation team to be implemented through the help of your class advisors. As we move on, we continue to respond to your needs as young Catholic individuals. With these programs and others to come, I hope that you find meaning in your participation and create memories that will give you valuable experiences this year. Enjoy and welcome to our Switch TV.
So, Madam Andre, what are we waiting for? Let us now proceed to the first segment of this show. A Shepherd's Corner. This segment is centered on reflection, sharing from the invited priest or ordained religious person about the given theme. The priest will give to us what Jesus in the Gospel would teach us about our faith, morality, mission, and social responsibility. Let us welcome Reverend Father Xavier Amoroso, formator from Holy Rosary Major Seminary. Life is really full of paradox. Take a look at this. If the one perspiring is handsome, he is hot. But if he is not good looking, then it's gross. If someone who is handsome goes to have a tattoo, it's cool. But if he is not handsome, he is a drug addict. If someone who is handsome stares at you, it tickles. If not, then probably he is a maniac. If a handsome guy sits beside you, then he is your soulmate. But if he is not, probably he is there to hold you up. <laughs> life is so unfair. Indeed, there are really things in life that are difficult to understand. Just like in our gospel yesterday, it is an example of a reality so difficult to understand. And if you remember the previous Sunday, Peter boldly proclaimed, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. But this Christ tells us that he must go to Jerusalem to suffer and die. No wonder Peter's reaction was understandable, for this just cannot be. My Messiah, my Savior must have suffered because he is the omnipotent God. He is the Christ, the Son of the living God. All authority, all power and honor has been given to this Christ. Yes, my dear friends, it is so difficult to understand the truth that the God we worship and adore is the same God who will suffer and die on the cross. However, reflecting deeply on this revelation of Jesus, that he will suffer and die, then we are consoled that indeed in our own experience of pain and suffering, in times when we can no longer understand why, we realize that we have a God who understands us, for he himself experienced a similar incomprehensible reality. Jesus as the suffering Messiah is a difficult truth to understand, but it assures us that we are never alone in this journey, come with me. In the second part of last Sunday's Gospel, Jesus tells us of the consequences in accepting him as the suffering Messiah. Jesus is telling us that we cannot be his authentic disciples if we do not walk the same way of the cross. Incidentally, this is what happened to the prophet Jeremiah in last Sunday's first reading. The prophet was in crisis and in deep struggle. As he preaches the word of God, negative reactions were increasing. However, he also cannot resist the overwhelming power of God in his life. My dear friends, may I remind you that being a Christian is not like visiting Disneyland where everyone is happy. No, to be a Christian means being ready to take up any kind of cross, small, medium, large, or even extra large. And we are now ready to carry these crosses again because we know that we have a suffering Messiah. There is a God who is willing to carry the cross with us. And once we do this, bearing the words of St. Paul in the second reading last Sunday, we are able to discern what is right, good, pleasing, and perfect before the Lord. And so, my dear friends, today we are made to know that the God whom we believe is a suffering Christ. Yes, it is difficult to understand, but a great consolation for us who also suffer. And the same suffering Christ also asks us today never to be afraid to walk the same way of the cross. After all, the ending was not in Calvary, 
but in the empty tomb. Some things in life are difficult to understand. God, the problem of evil, bad things happening to good people, Jesus, the Son of God, hanging on the cross of death, and the list continues. Well, I hope you don't include your faith as something difficult to understand. But for us Christians, Jesus, the cross, and love can coexist because for Jesus, the cross is his proof of love. Then if someone tells you, I love you to the moon and back, Jesus is telling us today, I love you to the cross and back. Amen. God bless you. Thank you very much, Father Savior, for those meaningful points of reflection about service. All right, Madam Tin, we are down with our next segment, which is very close to my heart. We call it Jam, Josephian Artists and Musicians. This segment will be dedicated in religious, Christian, or secular singing. There will be invited teachers, students, and alumni to render beautiful and melodious songs to entertain and make the listeners reflect to love God in the form of music. Now, we will be entertained with a beautiful rendition of the song Pangyo. Let us welcome our very own Jules Paletra, Jerez Lucenia, Vince Roldan, Esper Solano, and Sir Jerome Burr. Good 
day, Josephians. In today's episode of Ticket from the Guidance, we're going to talk about self-care. Now let's explore the meaning of self-care. It is said that self-care is about being a champion for your own physical, mental, and emotional well-being. Taking care of your mental, emotional, and physical health is key to your overall well-being. Practicing good self-care can help you take life's challenges in your stride, boost your self-esteem, and work on your self-acceptance. Let's also discuss the importance of self-care. Self-care encourages you to maintain a healthy relationship with yourself so that you can transmit the good feelings to others. Remember that you cannot give to others what you do not have. Furthermore, through self-care, you can be the best version of yourself for the people around you. Everyone around you also benefits from the renewed energy and joy you exhibit. Now, here are some tips on how to practice self-care. First is to focus on the things you enjoy. This could be an existing hobby or something brand new that you wanted to try. Why not try creating things? For example, drawing, painting, writing, or crafting, playing games or puzzles, decorating, or spending time watching content you enjoy on social media or streaming sites. Try to connect with others. Try to make time regularly to connect with friends, family, classmates, or other people in your life. It can help you and them to feel more connected. Why not try different ways of keeping in touch to find the ones that work best? For example, through video calls, pieces or games with friends at the frequency that works for you. You may also find your routine. Try to find a routine that is realistic, flexible, and includes some fun. There are many ways to do this, so experiment with what works best for you. The routine for you might look different from someone else's, and that's okay. Why not try picking three things to do each day, breaking your day up into chunks, or planning regular meal times and bedtimes? Now, you can also try to move your body. As many of us are spending lots of time at home, we may not be keeping active as much as we usually do, which is important for our mental health. Try your best to incorporate movement and activity in your routine, in whatever way works best for you. Why not try a form of exercise that you already do? A new type of exercise, a stretch on the sofa, working out with a friend over video chat, or a dance around your room. Please also treat yourself and others with compassion. This is a new, challenging time for everyone, so try to be understanding to yourself, like you would to a friend or a loved one, especially if you are finding things difficult or things don't go the way you had planned. You may also find that being compassionate towards others and helping them if you are able can make both you and them feel uplifted. Remember that everyone is in a different situation and may be struggling in different ways. So being compassionate towards others can go a long way. Also, focus on what you can control and acknowledge what you can't. There is a lot that feels uncertain right now. It can feel scary and overwhelming when we don't know what will happen and a lot of it will be out of our control. Trying to identify the things that you do not have control over and those that you do not can help make this feel a bit more manageable. Lastly, be realistic. Remember that productivity is not your identity. Take it a day at a time. Some days will be easier to stick to a routine than others. Don't beat yourself up if you aren't as productive as you'd like to be. Your productivity is not and will never be tied to your identity. There has been a huge amount of change to daily life 
and it may not be realistic to expect yourself to be as productive as you were before. If you find yourself feeling a bit unmotivated or like you haven't got as much done in a day as you usually would, that's okay. Focus on making a plan that feels manageable for you as you are right now. And we're done! Thank you for listening and I hope that you learned something in today's episode of Take It From The Guidance. Don't forget to follow us on our official Facebook page, SJS Guidance Center. Thank you so much and we hope to see you soon. I am Sir Jerome and welcome to Josephian Spirituality. For the first episode of Switch TV, our theme is service. Service is one of our core values here at St. Joseph School. But what is service? And how should we show service to God and to others? Well, service is when we give the best of ourselves with a genuine spirit of caring and sharing, always considering the welfare of others and the community more than the self-interest. We nurture a culture of trusting and helping relationship so that people grow as better persons. We, Josephians, advocate a conscientious exercise of our responsibilities animated by altruism and benevolence. In the first book of Samuel, it says there, But be sure to fear the Lord and serve Him faithfully with all your heart and consider what great things He has done for you. How should we serve God? Well, we can serve God by serving others. Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, whatever you do to the least of my brothers and sisters, you do it to me. The best part of this biblical passage is when Jesus identified himself with the least of all, with the poor, with the forgotten, with the marginalized. When we serve the least, the last, and the lost, we are serving Jesus. Jesus uplifted the morale and dignity of human persons, reminding us that whatever we are, whoever we are, whichever social status we are in, we are all children of God, created in His own image and likeness, saved by Jesus Christ, and sanctified by the Holy Spirit. We need to help in the community building, transformative citizens fighting for justice and equality. As Christians and as Josephians, this is our mission, to love God and to serve others, being the salt and light of the world. We have this responsibility to our brothers and sisters who suffer. We should not be blind and deaf to the needs of others, especially in the time of pandemic. A greater call for each one of us to help and serve others. Pause and reflect upon yourself. When was the last time you serve others and look at them with dignity? Are you the kind of person who looked down on these poor people? 
When was the last time that you disrespected someone because of their social status? When was the last time you prayed and helped those in need? Just like Saint Joseph, who showed love, care, and compassion in service to Jesus and Mary, we should also imitate Saint Joseph by serving, caring, and loving the least, the last, and the lost of our brothers and sisters. Let me end this with the words of Mother Teresa. She said, Fate in action is love. Love in action is service. Let us pray together. Lord, help me to serve freely and wholeheartedly out of love for you and others. Help me to give of myself regardless of the reaction of others and to find satisfaction in this act of love alone by serving you and by serving others. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amare et servire. Once again, I am Sir Jerome and may God bless us all. Thank you very much, Sir Jerome, for that sharing on Josephian spirituality centered on service. Amare et servire. Indeed, we are called to serve God and serve others. Our next segment is Ni Hao. This segment will be dedicated in showcasing Chinese culture, language, music, dance, poetry, tradition, and the likes. This segment will make us appreciate more the beauty of Chinese culture. Wang Li Shen Chu He Dang Wu Han Di He Xia Tu Shi Chi Han Chong Chan Li Li Jie Xin Ku That was a beautiful Chinese poem. Indeed. Our next segment is Hell Check. This segment will be dedicated for the health and other physiological concerns and information every Josephian should know and understand. Especially in this time of pandemic, our school nurses and physicians will give their advice and expertise on the matter of health and other related topics. Let us welcome Nurse Dai and Nurse Tanta. Good day guys! At this point in time, we are all bombarded with information regarding COVID-19, signs and symptoms, prevention, etc. It's good that we are constantly reminded about it, but today, let's also give time for other health concerns to be discussed. Some of the important health reminders that are somehow still connected with our present situation. Many are... I may say most of us are studying and working at home and one of our goal is of course to live healthy so we may consider exercise and diet to keep us fit and it's a good thing to know if what we are doing is correct so today our topic will be common myths and about diet and fitness myth number six guess what skipping meals to lose weight 
Skipping meals can cause your metabolism to slow down, which can cause weight gain or make it harder to lose weight. Metabolism is a process in which our body turns calories into energy. If we skip meals or go a long time without eating, our body goes into a survival mode, like a computer in a better safe mode. What happens is our metabolism will also adjust. What it do is save energy and burn less, making us feel weak, dizzy, and irritable. This causes our cells and body to crave food which cause us to eat a lot. Myth number five. Guess what? Snacking is bad. So that's a myth. The concept of snacking itself isn't unhealthy. It's the choice of food that makes it unhealthy. Foods with loaded with saturated fat, added sugars, and salt, while at the same time being low in nutrients like junk foods, sodas, and candies. So, we can always substitute them with healthy options like fruits, unprocessed, of course. Why unprocessed? That will be answered in myth number four. This. Canned fruits are same as natural fruits. Before eating a canned pineapple or fruit cocktail because you think it's a healthy choice, there are things we should consider. First is the sugar added. Many of canned fruits such as fruit cocktails has in its label in heavy syrup, meaning soaked in lots of sugar. Second is the preservatives which is not really healthy. If you can have fresh fruits, that's a healthy choice. But don't overeat it. After all, it is still carbs and it contains sugar. Myth number three. The protein in vegetables are the same as meat protein. That is a myth. We need protein. It is an important com component of every cell in the body. Hair and nails are most com ma mostly made of protein. Our body uses protein to build and repair tissues. You also use protein to make enzymes, hormones, and other body chemicals. Protein is an important building block of bones, muscles, cartilage, skin, and blood. There are two types of proteins we eat. First, plant-based proteins, usually found in tofu, lentils, nuts, and other vegetables. Animal-based proteins like meat, fish, and poultry. It's another type of protein. And I guess of the two proteins, that is our favorite. We may decide to eat purely vegetables, but uh, that alone will not complete a balanced diet. Plant based protein may be good, but it contains minimal important nutrients compared to meat proteins are vitamin B12, vitamin D, DHA, and zinc. 
Smith, number two. Yummy. Cheat day is equals to mukbang. Come on, guys. Many of those who attempted losing weight can relate to this. As we plan for losing weight, we set restrictions on the foods and drinks we take. But we all arrive at a point in time where our cravings become too powerful that we give in and feel guilty afterwards. Well, the good news is, that is normal. That's why in a week, we should reward ourselves just to tame our cravings. That's the purpose of cheat day. It doesn't mean we can eat everything we like as many as we like. If we do so, our sacrifices will be in vain, as we only replace what we already achieved. Here's a tip. During cheat day, set only one food you crave and eat it in moderation just to satisfy cravings set schedule every week but as you do please don't overeat it again how it works we consume more foods than we burn that's how weight loss and weight gain works okay myth number one many are guilty in this Wag awayin ang weighing scale. Trust me, hindi yan sira. Ito ang problema. Checking the scale every day to be inspired. Yes, that's a myth. Take note. Losing weight is not a one-day process. It takes time. Lots of time. Our body needs to adjust slowly. Because sudden changes may be more dangerous than we think. So if you decide to live fit and healthy, First, we have to be committed in what we have decided. It will take lots and lots of heartbreaks and sacrifice, but trust me, it's worth it. Again, this is Nurse Jonathan. This is Health Services. Thank you very much, Nurse Tan Tan and Nurse Dai for the highly informative and timely health tips and concerns. Our next segment is... Forward on in March! This segment will be dedicated in sharing all reflections and stories of triumph and defeat, struggles and successes from our SJS alumni. Let us welcome Ms. Carmel Joy Vergara, 2018 Class Valedictorian. Happy Friday, Josephians! These days may be challenging for all of us, but I pray for your safety and good health. Before anything else, let me introduce myself. My name is Carmel Joy F. Vergara from Batch 2018, and currently I'm a third-year intermed student or a first-year medical proper student studying at the University of the Philippines, Manila. And I am very honored to speak in front of you for the Switch TV series. So thank you. And... So, if there was anything I learned for 15 years na naging Josephian ako, kasi nurse ito pa lang, naging Josephian na ako, it was to make every simple action or effort to count in, every, in anything that we do, kahit simple pa lang yan. Uh, and sa mga bagay na ginagawa ko or natin, ay to have a kind and understanding heart always. During these trying times, what the world needs is a helping hand. Kaya laging kinuturo sa atin sa St. Joe to serve others or to extend a helping hand always na tumulong sa kapwa, especially sa mga nangangailangan. And minsan, in-overthink natin ang gestures na to na to be big scale lagi. Kahit hindi naman talaga ganun yung case, na, case all the time. Serving or helping others does not always have to be grand para makagawa ng meaningful impact sa sarili natin, sa friends natin, sa classmates, sa school, sa community, or sa bansa. 
Pero, o nga naman, iisipin natin, studyante pa lang ako, how can I really serve or how can these things are to, paano siya magkaka-impact sa, in the long run. Pe, so, yan yung misconceptions lagi. What we can do is to start simple or start small, with small steps, baby steps. Halimbawa, dyan sa mga bahay nyo, uh, hindi nyo na kailangang hintayin pa parents nyo na utusan kayo pag may kailangan gawing household chores. Or kaya naman sa ACADS, make the most out of it. Sa mga group work, sa projects, sa exams, assignments, invest your effort palagi and do your best. You may not feel its impact as of now. Parang mapapaisip ka, nakakatulong ba talaga ako or nakakaserve ba talaga ako? Pero promise, in the long run, it will show. I wouldn't be doing what I've been doing now sa college or I wouldn't be even taking the course I am taking now sa college if it weren't for the experiences I've had in St. Joe. Yung decision ko na maging na mag-take ng medical course is from the willingness to serve other people. My dream of becoming a doctor is powered by my willingness to serve. This helps me keep the fire burning within me. Kasi gusto ko talaga makapag-graduate and may end goal ako na maging doctor para makatulog na sa mga nangangailangan talaga ng tulong. Especially with the healthcare situation we have now and with the problems we are dealing as a country right now. So, kapag nahihirapan ako sa ACADS, I try to remind myself, para saan ko ito ginagawa? Para kanino? Why am I doing this? The same goes for all of you. Turn these words into actions. Turn this willingness to serve into actions. And start young. Start, start, start with small steps. Start with baby steps. I repeat, these times may be hard for all of us, but I assure you, you're all doing great. So, don't forget to take care of yourself and to take a rest once in a while. And always remember that small acts, when multiplied by millions, can transform the world. Thank you and have a nice day. Thank you very much, Ms. DJ, for that very inspiring and motivating words of wisdom. Truly, service is showing genuine care and compassion to others just like our participants in each segment of this episode. As Josephians, we are called in service to others. That is our mission and responsibility. Service is putting in mind the good of others rather than self-centeredness. Just like our very own Saint Joseph, he served God by taking care of Jesus and Mary. We too are invited to the same mission, serving God by taking care of others, especially the ones in need. Of course, this would not be possible if not for our invited guests and presenters, for helping us impart our, to our beloved viewers the value of our today's theme, service. Please follow and like the Campus Ministry Facebook page and the YouTube channel for more videos. Tune in for more fun-filled and inspiring episodes only here on Switch TV. This is Madam Team and this is Madam Andre. Forward on we march with St. Joseph as our guide. Iliad Joseph Lumbe, God bless us all.